from Seattle, Washington, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube on the ground at OpenStack Day Seattle 2015. Now, here's your host, Jeff Frick. Hi, Jeff Rick here with theCUBE. We are on the ground in Seattle, Washington at the OpenStack Seattle Innovation Day. Pretty exciting, it's the first kind of dedicated OpenStack event in Seattle. We were in Vancouver a few weeks ago for OpenStack Summit. We'll be in the Bay Area for OpenStack Silicon Valley next week. So it's all about OpenStack and it's all about open source. We're really excited to be joining this next segment by Chet Golding, Principal Cloud Architect from Zeflin Systems. Welcome. Well, thank you. Absolutely. So you're a local guy, so what, how, how do you like having kind of all this action going on in Seattle this week? You had Linux Con, you had Container Con. Seems like everybody's in Seattle this week. Yeah, I have a close friend, one of our partners was speaking yesterday on, uh, on uh, containerization. Pretty interesting, actually. Yeah. Busy people. We were at DockerCon a couple of weeks ago, and clearly, you know, Docker's hit some magic in terms of containers and really the momentum behind containers, although everyone always says, well, containers have been around for a long time, but really now it's, you know, Docker's kind of hit the secret sauce. Why do you think, why do you think suddenly all the excitement around something that's really been around for a while? Well, it's, uh, it, it's a desire to go beyond uh, where we were before, like always is in our industry, right? Um, so the container thing is really cool um, you know, a few years ago, if you were looking at uh, running something on VMware, or running something on Amazon, uh, you got one virtual machine, you could put what you wanted on that one box, right? Um, one of the interesting models to go into is, uh, I'm going to go to Rackspace, or I'm going to go to Amazon, I'm going to pay for my one virtual machine, I pay for that for the standard price. Um, but I can only run this one app on it, because my app's designed that way. If I go with containers, I'm still paying that same price, but maybe I can run 10 or 12 apps on that same machine instead of having to pay 10 or 12 times as much. Um, that's the whole goal of cloud computing, right? I mean, we want to be able to put things where we want them, have them move around, have them cost less, give us more flexibility, and containers just go further down that one road, right? Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's amazing how you think innovation is done and we just keep like re going over and over another wave, another wave, another wave. But you're here talking about something different, which Sri said, it's the first telco track, dedicated telco track at an OpenStack event. So talk a little bit about your history in telco yeah. and why this is new and, and, and an exciting, again, a new opportunity. Yeah. So my, uh, my history in technology goes back quite a way, but working with telcos is uh, relatively new. It's only been within this decade, right? For me, I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> um, but the interesting thing to me with OpenStack and telcos is the community itself. So I'm more interested in the people in this case, particular case than the technology, right? So telcos are one of those industries that's been around for a long time that has dealt with this border crossing concept, right? You, you pick up your phone and you call Bangladesh. I can pick up my phone, I can call South America, I can call Africa, whatever. Um, and there's another component where our telcos are becoming cloud companies. We hadn't really thought of them, we thought of them as phone companies, right? Um, but your cell phone these days, you have an application, you know, your data's in the cloud, you back up your contact list to the cloud, you contact Facebook and all of those kinds of things are all carrying over your telco, right? So the telcos are working on platforms and standards just like everyone else, and they're working on similar standards to go around the globe. One of those is, hey, we're all using OpenStack, right? So we have telcos in, you know, I've worked with them in Europe and in Asia and the US, and they're using the same basic platform for the same basic reason and they're using the same community to solve the same problems, right? So they're crossing borders, not just in, uh, in territory, physically, right? And they're crossing borders in technology. They want to work with VMware, they want to work with OpenStack, they want to work with IBM, and they're the big dogs, right? They're going out, we're going to spend hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars on these things in the US and Europe and China. And so all the big companies listen, right? VMware wants to work with AT&T, you know, VMware wants to work with T-Mobile, right? And if these companies want to work with OpenStack at the same time on the same piece of hardware, then those are problems that we're all sol solving together. So they're crossing that technology border, right? And then you get this human thing, this human thing, it's like I said, it's most interesting to me. Um, I sat in a conference, you know, talking to some guy from the Netherlands, right? Um, Arturo is here, he came over, I forget where he came from, Spain maybe. Um, and I was talking with this, uh, this guy from China, right, all in this one conference. 
And we're from all over the place, and we're all supporting the same thing. We're supporting OpenStack. You know, one of these things is uh, multilingual editions of the OpenStack documentation, right? And so, you know what? There's a telco in China that really likes being able to get OpenStack documentation in Chinese, right? So we're crossing all of these different kinds of borders with OpenStack, and the telco is doing it everywhere. It's really actually pretty cool. And their biggest thing is, again, people, they have to make it easy and transparent. So in some of the talks today, we, we talked about how complicated OpenStack is, right? But if you look at the corporations, the big enterprises, right, they need to deliver OpenStack and make it look so simple that a five-year-old can pick up their cell phone or dad's cell phone or tablet, and they can do something where their data is all going in and off of the cloud. And that's the, the cool way today that OpenStack is crossing borders all over the, all over the world. So how is crossing borders via AT&T or a telco different than crossing borders uh, at a big enterprise? I don't know, Shell, Shell Oil, I'm thinking Big Oil, or, um, yeah. or IBM, or HP, or, whom, or whomever. How, how is the, del the telco model different? Um, well, it, it, that's an excellent question, actually. So um, if you talk about the oil companies, they're also crossing borders. That's absolutely true, right? Um, the difference maybe is the oil company is reaching and improving the lives of people I if you look at it that way and that you can get gas to put in your boat, you can get gas to put in your, your toys, you know, in your lawnmowers, whatever it is. They're, they're doing a lot of work that changes the lives of people and they're definitely doing that. Um, telcos are a little different in that you have um, this order of magnitude that's just gargantuous, right? There's something like uh, 6.2 billion cell phones in use today. It's just daunting to think about, right? Um, China has something like 1.2, India just under a billion, right? That kind of num those kind of numbers, they're just phenomenal numbers. So all of that cloud traffic, if you think of it that way, right, is going on and off of pretty much everyone's device through some kind of a telco, because that's where all the data actually moves, right? Um, and so even the other enterprises really are using telcos to move all of that data. So the, the fundamental layer where the most effect is being had is really at the telco layer. They're not in every case the driver of the newest and the coolest technology in many people's minds, but if you think of all the stuff they have to support, right, if there's anything cool you can put on your cell phone, AT&T or T-Mobile or Verizon, they have to support that, right? So they have to drive the coolest technology to support that kind of stuff. You know, considering, consider your, your, your home devices. You hook up your TV and you watch one channel of TV with one amount of data going through, right? Your cable, your cable box or whatever. And these companies are, are handling hundreds of millions to billions of concurrent connections doing that for every single person on the planet, right? right. And so that's, it's phenomenal. I mean, if you just stop and think about what they're doing, it's actually mind blowing. Yeah. Well, and, and, and as you said, since since everything is going through mobile, uh, certainly with with the younger folks, all this innovation ultimately is delivered via the telco. It is absolutely. Yeah. You know, I watch uh, I watch TV on my cell phone. <laughs> Which I, I never guessed that that was going to happen. So so <laughs> last question, you, your perspective, thinking of the people. What's the next big hurdle uh, to take down in terms of the, of the people in the process? Um, well, that's, that's pretty tricky. It's hard to say what the next big hurdles are from the perspective of, uh, of people. I, I look at it as the five-year-old is, is our leader in technology today, right? The rest of us are trying to catch up. And I don't mean that to be silly or cheeky. You know, I seriously mean that because, you know, I will see someone who's 85, someone who's 50, 60, you know, down to their 20s and 30s, y you get to some point and they still believe it's possible that it won't work, right? It, it might somehow not function. And you go all the way down to that five-year-old, they don't believe that, right? The, the youth of, of the world has always believed anything is possible because they don't know any better yet, right? So the driver, the real directors of where we're going are going to be those kids, right? Because they've seen the things that, you know, probably you and I saw in Star Trek, right? right. You know, it's still to us, uh, it's still kind of science fiction. To them, it's never been science fiction. It's all reality, right? So the next hurdle is going to be probably for us to realize that they're right. We're still a little doubtful of how far we can go, right? And they're not. They're not doubtful, right? So we have to actually answer their desire to have it continue to be real, right? 
we can't have it break down. Amazon can't go down, right? Rackspace can't go down. AT&T, T-Mobile, all the telcos, they can't go down because this five-year-old wants to send pictures to his dad in Iraq or something, right? right? Or to his buddy who lives in China that he just met on Facebook last week, right? And that's the next hurdle is us understanding these guys believe it and we have to follow through. Yeah, it's a great close, Chet. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes. Uh, best of luck on, your, on your, uh, your session later today. I'm Jeff Frick. You are watching theCUBE. We are live on the ground in Seattle, Washington at OpenStack Seattle. Thanks for watching.